Welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest. This is a video on simple equations designed for grades 3 and 4. Let's get started. What is an equation? Well, an equation is an equality statement that usually contains unknown terms. The unknown terms are called variables, and we often want to solve for the variables. So for example, if I have a simple equation like x plus 1 equals 2, x is the variable, and we often say we want to solve for x or isolate for x. To solve for x just means find the value of x that works. Let's try our hands on a question. An ogre flint was preparing a barbell for weightlifting. What is the weight of the stone he should put on the right side so that both sides weigh the same? You want your barbells to be perfectly balanced, otherwise you're going off to the side, fearing away. So take a second, pause this video, perhaps write an equation that would describe this statement, and then come back to us. Let's solve this together now. Let's write a mathematical expression for this word problem. On the one hand, we have that 8 plus 12 plus 26 has to equal 17 plus 20 plus unknown question mark. The question mark is quite a cumbersome symbol. Let's replace that with x. We're more used to that anyway. Here is our equation. We would like to have x by itself on one side of the equation. That way we'll know what it equals. This operation is called isolating for x. So let's do some quick mental arithmetic. On the one hand, we have 46 equals, and then on the other hand, we have 17 plus 20, 37 plus x. 46 equals 37 plus x. In order to isolate x, we need to subtract 37 from both sides of the equation. Um, in terms of the original ogre, he could have taken the equivalent of 17 kilograms and 20 kilograms away from both sides to see what he needs to balance out. So minus 37 on both sides. On the one side, we would only have an x. On the other side, we would only have a 9. That is our final answer, x equals 9. If we put 9 kilograms where the question mark is, the dumbbell or the barbell will be perfectly balanced. Let's try another question. Milan, Ivan, and Peter went fishing for trout. They caught 20 trout altogether. Milan caught the most, twice as many as Ivan, and Peter caught four less trout than Ivan. How many trout did Ivan catch? Again, take a second, mull this over, think it through, come back once you have a solution. Are you ready? Let's see what we can figure out. We need something to label as our x, as our variable. Let x be the number of trout that Ivan caught, just because that seems to be the most popular bit of information in this problem. We've got twice as many as that, four less than that. It's popular. So as mentioned, Milan caught 2x trout, twice as many. Peter caught x minus 4 trout, four less. And we are told that they got 20 trout altogether. Let's put all this into one equation. We know that x, how much Ivan caught, plus 2x, how much Milan caught, plus x minus 4, what Peter caught, equals 20. Can we isolate for x? Sure we can. First, those brackets are not really doing anything. Next, we have x plus 2x plus x, 4x altogether, minus 4 equals 20. And now we do what we did last time. Add 4 to both sides of the equation in order to get rid of the minus 4. Reverse it. Now we have 4x equals 24, and we just need to 
divide both sides by 4 in order to get x on its own on one side and 6 on its own on the other. x equals 6. Ivan caught 6 trapped. Final answer, D, and that is correct. Hope you got that one. Let's try another question. The length of a track is 15 meters. Points A, B are marked on the track. AC is going to be 7 meters. BD, the length is 10 meters. And the whole length, AD, is 15 meters. Calculate the length of BC. Again, take a couple of seconds with this problem, work it out on a piece of paper, and then come back to this video. Well, we know exactly what to label as x. We just transfer what we know to the diagram that we have. AC is 7, BD is 10, AD is 15, and the unknown BC will be x. All measurements in meters. What else can we say? Well, both intervals AC and BD cover the whole of AD with an overlap extra at BC, right? So what would happen if we were to add 7 and 10, right? This would be the length AD altogether, us traveling from A to C, and then imagine traveling from B to D. So you would be traveling the length of AD, 15, but you would also be traveling the length BC an extra bit, right? Because BC appears in both of those intervals. So the equation we have is that 7 plus 10 equals 15 plus x, our little overlap. And we can solve this quite easily. Let's subtract 15 from both sides of the equation. On the one hand, we have x, and on the other, we have 17 minus 15 equals 2 x equals 2 meters, b, final answer. And that is correct. Let's do another question. A bathroom floor has a rectangular shape of size 24 decimeters by 20 decimeters. You may not have seen decimeters before. Um, if you think about 10 centimeters, that is the length of one decimeter. Hopefully that helps. Now, this 24 by 20 bathroom floor is covered by square tiles with a perimeter of 8 decimeters. How many tiles are there going to be? Have you solved it? I hope you have, because we're going to take up the solution. If you haven't, pause the video and solve it along so I don't steal all the glory from you. Let's see what we Let's see what we have. First, let us find the side length of a tile. We know the perimeter is 8 decimeter, and we know it is a square tile. Let's consider the side length of the tile, and let's call it x. Then the perimeter is going to be x plus x plus x plus x, 4x, because it's a square tile. All sides are going to be equal. There's going to be 4 of them. So 4x equals 8, which means x equals 2. 2 decimeters. Quite a big tile. Well, how many tiles are there if we have 24 by 20 and each tile has side length 2? How do we figure that out? Let's consider the total number of tiles and call it y. The area of one tile is 4 decimeters squared, 2 by 2. The area of the whole floor, well, that's 24 by 20, right? We multiply the length by the width to get the area. In the case of one tile, that was 4. In the case of the whole floor, that's 480. We can construct this equation, right? 4 times the number of tiles that we have will give us the total area of the floor. 4y will give us the whole total area of the floor but the area of the floor is also 480. We have this equation, which we can solve for y quite easily, dividing both sides by 4. y equals 120, 
Here's our final answer. There are 120 tiles in this bathroom floor. We could have solved this any other number of ways. We could have, for example, divided the 24 by 2 and the 20 by 2 and multiplied those together and gotten 12 times 10 equals 120 still. As long as you were using equations, you were making progress on this question. So 120 tiles, answer A, final answer. Let's see what I meant by saying that other approach, thing. right? So let's go through that slowly. If we have 24 uh, decimeters along the side and each square tile is two decimeters in length, then 24 divided by 12, we would have, sorry, 24 divided by two, we would have 12 tiles in each row. Likewise, 20 decimeters along the other side means 10 rows of tiles, each tile having two decimeters in length. And so now we see that we have 12 tiles along the length, 10 tiles along the width, 12 times 10, giving us once again, 120 tiles. This is a perfectly valid solution. It also uses equation. It will take the same amount of work the same level of ingenuity. Sometimes, a lot of the times, there are more than one ways to solve a problem in mathematics, and it is beautiful to try and see all the ways that we could solve something. Let's try another question. Today's Anne's and Helen's birthday. The sum of their ages is 19. How old is Helen today if exactly one of the following sentences is true? Anne is four years younger than Helen, or Helen is five years older than Anne. They can't both be true. Exactly one of the following sentences is true. Then, how old is Helen? Take a second, pause this video, figure this out. How would we go about solving this? I sense that equations might be a good friend to us in this case. Let's see what sorts of equations we can come up with. So we know several things. Some of their ages is 19. Helen's birthday and Anne's birthday is today. Let's see case, cases. Let's see that the first sentence, let's suppose that it's true. What would happen then? Anne is four years younger than Helen. So let's call X to be Helen's age, for example. Then Anne's age would be X minus four because Anne is four years younger. Altogether, we can have the following equation. Anne's age, X minus four, plus Helen's age, X, together make 19 today on their birthday. Meaning that, 2x minus 4 would have to be 19. The brackets were not doing anything for us there. Meaning that 2x minus 4 plus 4, which is 2x, is the same thing as 19 plus 4, which is 23. 2x equals 23, which would mean that x is 23 divided by 2, which is 11 and a half. This is contradicting our statement because today is Helen's birthday. She can't be 11 and a half years old on her birthday. She has to be a whole number of years old. So the first sentence cannot be true. Statement is false. Let's look at the second statement more closely. Then. Again, let's say X is Helen's age. Now we're saying that Helen is five years older than Anne, so Anne's age would be X minus five. You can, of course, rework this in terms of uh, Anne's age instead. You will still get the same answer. So for us, this would be the equation X, Helen's age, plus X minus five, Anne's age equals 19. If you are making everything in terms of 
Anne's age, you might have something like a plus 5, which is Helen's age, plus a, which is Anne's age, equals 19. Again, you will get the same answer in the same number of steps. For us, again, the brackets are not doing anything, and we can drop them. So 2x minus 5 equals 19, and we are trying to isolate for x. Let's move the 5 to the other side. 2x equals 19 plus 5, which is 24. Divided by 2 on both sides, x equals 12. Helen is 12, and Anne would be 12 minus 5, which is 7 years old. Let's make sure we have the correct answer. 12 plus 7 equals 19. Good job us. We are indeed correct. What is it we were asking for? How old is Helen today? She is 12 years old. D is the final answer. Another question. Grandmother is 59 years old now, and her four children, her four grandchildren, pardon me, are 14, 8, 7, and 3 years old right now. In how many years will the total age of all the grandchildren equal the age of the grandmother? It's going to happen quite soon. It's going to happen somewhere between five years from now and ten years from now. So take a second, pause the video, work this out for yourself, and then come back to us, please. Are we ready? Let's take a look. 14 plus 8 plus 7 plus 3. Grandmother's age is 59. And let's call x, I mean, what are we looking for here? The number of years before the total age of all the grandchildren is the same as the age of the grandmother. So let's call that x straight away. We know we are looking for that. So we have that after x years, you know, our first grandchild is going to be 14 plus x years old. Our second is going to be 8 plus x years old. Our third is 7 plus x years old. Our fourth is 3 plus x years old. We are adding x to each of their ages. And then we're also adding x to grandmother's age, because she's not going to stay 59 forever. We're going to add x as well. So let's isolate. Again, the brackets are not doing much for us. We can drop the brackets. 14 plus 8 plus 7 plus 3. That's going to be 32, right? 14 plus 15 plus 3. Uh, and then we have four x's on one side and an x on the other and a 59 on the other as well. 32 plus 4x equals 59 plus x. Well, let's isolate for x. We can subtract off 32 from both sides, leaving us with a 27 on one side, and then we can subtract off an x from both sides in order to make sure all of our x's are on one side, because we want to isolate for x. We don't want a bunch of x's running on either side of the equation. So now we have 3x equals 27, and it's an easy, straightforward road from there. Divide by 3, x equals 9. In nine years from now, grandmother is going to be 68. And if you check, the grandchildren will be 14 plus 9, 8 plus 9, 7 plus 9, 3 plus 9. And their total sum will indeed equal 68 as well. It's always good to check our answers when we have them. Right, let's see, we have 14 plus 9 is 23, 8 plus 9 is 17, 7 plus 9 is 16, 3 plus 9 is 12. Altogether, indeed, that is 68. Good job, us. It is in nine years that the total age of all the grandchildren is the same as that of the grandmother. We did not make any arithmetic error. Thank you very much for listening along to this video. I hope you have a great day, and I hope you join us in one of these classes next semester. Bye.